Hello and welcome. My name is Julia and I'm so thankful that you are joining me. Today we're going to paint one of my wonky whimsical animals, a foxy fox. I'm tracing my pencil lines with a waterproof black marker because we're going to watercolor with my distress oxide inks. While I'm drawing, I have kind of an announcement to make. I can't wait any longer. I have to start fall, Halloween, winter and Christmas crafting right now. So from now on, I will make cards, crafts and art journaling pages that are creepy, cute and Christmassy, as I am inspired or feel like it. So buckle up and make sure to return for many more videos. When the outline is done, I'm pulling out some texture paste and I'm going to use this star stencil from Dilutions and make some dimensional stars, framing my fox. I'm using a palette knife to fill in the stars with white matte texture paste from Rangers. But any texture paste will do and you can use an old credit card instead of a palette knife. If you don't have texture base, any acrylic paint you like can be used to make these stars. It takes some practice, but I think this texture paste is a fun way to add dimension. I make sure not to have the stars too close to my fox, but also have the stars on every side to bring this project together. Before we color, I have some stamping to do and I'm using a stamp set bought on second hand to give my whimsical fox some wings. That's why I've masked off some of the fox and the crystal ball so I can have the right wing pushed back into the background behind the crystal ball. I stamped the wings in archival black ink so it won't smudge when I hit it with a lot of water. Pulling off the post-it tape I've used as a mask is always exciting to see that the wings are where I want them to be. Now we watercolor with three shades of Distress Oxide inks in orange and red. I have carved pumpkin, ripe persimmon and candied apple using an acrylic block as my palette and spraying water on top. Starting with clean water on my brush, I cover my fox in water and then start with the lightest shade, carved pumpkin, putting down the color where I want my shadows and then dragging the color out with water, diluting it the most where I imagine the light to hit my fox. I do the same thing with the next color for the fox, putting down ripe persimmon along the edges and dragging it out, leaving the darkest color in the shadows. I do the, do the same procedure with the candied apple, leaving me with a fox I really like.
I left some of the parts of the fox white, and when the other colors are drying, I take some distress oxide, scattered straw, a warm yellow, and paint in the white parts, the lower part of the fox's face, her neck, stomach, and the tip of her tail, with a very diluted shade of scattered straw. For the wings of my fox, I'm using the Distress Oxide colors, Peacock Feathers and Salty Ocean and dilute them with water, so the wings will seem somewhat translucent. Before I start on the background, I paint in all the textured stars with gold acrylic paint. When all my stars are golden, I color the crystal ball beside my fairy fox. I use black soot, chipped sapphire, wilted violet, salty ocean and in the middle a warm glow of scattered straw, mixing the colors together, blending with water, trying to create kind of a swirl in the crystal ball. For the background I'm using different shades of blue. Red and blue are on the opposite side of the color wheel and I choose blues in the background to really make the fox pop, but not introducing any new colors. Keep, keeping only these shades of color really helps this page to come together and feel calm, except for the contrast between red and blue. I'm using chipped sapphire, fire and salty ocean to randomly color, switching between the two and the shades they make with water. If I color on a star, it doesn't bother me, as I painted them in acrylics, so I can easily use a baby wipe to wipe the stars off. When all the shades of blue are mixed into the back, Round, I use chipped sapphire, going around the edges and using less water so the vibrant dark blue can frame the whole page.
I'm using peacock feathers for the fox's eyes and feel like the whimsical fox is starting to come together. Then I decide I want some more stars and quickly stencil in some stars with the same texture paste, masking it with post-it tape so I can stencil only the stars I want. I'm using a heat tool to speed up the drying process because I'm impatient. And then I paint, paint the stars with a coat of gold acrylic paint. And while I have that gold paint out, I paint in the stars in the crystal ball and the dots on the wings of the fox with gold. Then I decide that we need some splashes, so I use water to dilute the gold paint, cover up my fox and use a small brush to get these cool little clusters of gold dots. Then I take some black acrylic paint from Dina Wakely and mix in water to do the same procedure as before with the gold. After a quick dry. I take out my Distress Oxide black soot and go around the edges, blending it in with that dark blue, tying my painting together between the black outline, black splashes and black dark edges. I'm unsure if I want any words with my fox, but I decide to use these small white alphabet stickers and spell out believe if anyone ever doubted that this fox is magical. Then I frame the letters with a black marker, making several scribbly lines to frame them. And before the last pictures, I use a white gel pen to make little clusters of white dots. And then my fox is finished. Thank you all for watching and supporting my channel. I hope you feel inspired and are as eager as me to start creating in the spirit of the next four months and their holidays. Until the next time, see you soon.